So we're here today to talk about equilibration, the process of equilibration and equilibration equipment, equilibration devices. Um, my name is Jason, I'm with the industrial group and this is my colleague Eric, whom I'll be reviewing the process with. Equilibration is a process of applying a uniform pressure to the, surf to the entire surface of a sensor um, so that the software, the iScan or TechScan software, can electronically compensate for differences uh, across the surface of the sensor from one sensing element to the next, one sense L to another. Um, that's the process of equilibration. How do we accomplish that? With an equilibration device or an equilibrator. Uh, nicknamed a bladder, you may hear it referred to as a bladder sometimes. Uh, what it consists of is essentially uh, two sturdy surfaces, in this case, uh, and this, this model is a PV100E, uh, it's aluminum plates, contains a pneumatic urethane bladder. So the plates were there as a range from 0 to 100 psi, and that's what we'll be using for the purposes of our you know, uh, demonstration today. Uh, this is the controller box. It works with the equilibrator to control the pressure. It regulates the air pressure going in and out. It's a control valve, how much pressure goes in, how much pressure uh, you set, which we can, we'll, you'll see on the gauge here. Uh, we can apply pressure. We can turn the pressure off. We can also pull a small vacuum, which aids in uh, inserting and removing the sensor from within from without of the equilibrator. Before we get into it, we'll talk about why, why equilibration is important. And there are really three reasons why you'd want to equilibrate. First and foremost, you want to improve the quality of your data. You want to improve the results you can get from a tech scan system. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a great many of our customers who just open up the system, set it up, connect the sensor, and start capturing data right away. Right. And they're getting relative pressure measurements, what's high, what's low, making adjustments to their process or their equipment, and that's enough for them. They're satisfied with that, but there are there are a segment of customers that want to improve upon their accuracy. They want to improve upon the quality of their data, and for them, equilibration is a process that, that can get them there. Okay. Uh, and as you'll see as we go through the process, um, how it can improve the quality of the output from individual sensing elements within the sensor. Right. So that's the first reason why, and so and that's the main reason why. Secondly. Uh, the, re the reason why you'd want to equilibrate is to extend the useful life of your sensors. Now, the way our sensors show signs of wear and tear is twofold. There's physical wear and tear, which most people know of right away, abrasions, scratches, kinks, creases, things like that. But there's additionally, what you cannot see is that through the history of the use of the sensor, uh, particularly if it's a repeatedly repeated loading of the same particular shape or in the same region of the sensor, mm -hmm. that area of the sensor be can become less sensitive than the areas around it that haven't been loaded as often. Okay. Um, so through process of equilibration, we're able to compensate and essentially normalize that, that difference, uh, therefore prolonging the useful life of a sensor. Um, and that's in another in a valuable use of the, of the equilibration device and the equilibration process. Uh, and the third reason why you'd want to do equilibration would be for, uh, as a quality assurance check, to check the health of your sensor in a sense. Does it have any shorts? Does it have any dead spots? All right, so let's get into it. So what we've got is we've got, in this case, we've got iScan software opened up, uh, running with uh, Evolution hardware. In a, in a model 5076 sensor. Okay. Equilibration device uh, are, are essentially sized based on the maximum size sensor that you would use in your application. So in this, in this particular equilibration device, we can handle a sensor from somewhere on the order of uh, 12 by 5 inches maximum. Uh, and we have larger equilibrators uh, for larger sensors. But essentially, any size bladder, any bladder can equilibrate its maximum size sensor and anything smaller than that. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, when should we equilibrate? Should we do it before we start taking measurements? Can we do it after? Uh, you can actually. That's a that's a good question. And you can actually equilibrate before or after. 
That's one of the beauties of the system is that you can apply an equilibration after the fact, after you've already captured data. For example, if you've already got your system, uh, your sensor configured in your application, you, re you recorded and captured data, yep. um, you can then apply uh, an equilibration you've done afterwards to that data. Okay. But in this case, we're going to do it before. All right. All right. So we've got our sensor here. We've got a we've got a real time window open. Everything's working fine. Uh, and first thing we'll do is we'll insert it into the equilibration device. There's no air pressure applied right now. Zero zero uh, psi on our gauge. Um, so before we do anything, we want to make sure we've got the air pressure a little turned down. Okay. For starters, we don't want to because when we Apply, switch this lever into the apply pressure position, it's going to fill that bladder with whatever pressure we've got set. Right. Um, and we don't want to hit the sensor with a lot of uh, pressure all at once. Right. So okay. the first thing we do is we just make sure it's all the way backed off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can safely apply pressure, still zero PSI, and start to inflate the bladder. Okay, so now I'm going to start off a little bit slow, and maybe some air trap within the sensor will let it bleed out. We can see it on the screen that it's starting to take, you see a few little white uh, sense cells, that's air trap behind there, okay. preventing them from the size of the sensor from making contact. Okay. So we'll bring it up. Now, where, what, what pressure should you equilibrate? That's, a, that's you know, one of the first questions. The first thing, to back up a step, the first thing you want to do is, you want to determine what sensitivity range you're, you're going to use in your application. Okay. okay, so in this case, we're set at a, uh, a mid-level sensitivity. It's fine for, for the purposes of our demonstration. Um, and then the next thing you'd want to know is the approximate um, pressure range that you expect to see in your application. Okay? okay? Because we want to equilibrate at or around that range. If it's a very specific range, you can equilibrate it uh, at that specific range, mm -hmm. or if you're not sure, you can uh, you can equilibrate over a wider range. Okay. Okay. All right. So for purposes of today, we'll bring it up to about 30 pounds per square inch. Okay. Uh, we're going into the tools menu, process of equilibration. It shows us basically a grayscale map of the pressure distribution across the sensor, the whole entire surface of the sensor. We have an equilibration point. Do we want to add an equilibration point? Yes, we do. Uh, there's a timer here where we have to wait a certain amount of time. Now, in the in your application, you want uh, typically you'd want to mimic the time that your sensor would be loaded in your equilibration time. Uh, for the purposes of today, we'll keep that time at five seconds. Okay. We click start. Software is essentially uh, triggered a timer. It's going to wait the five seconds that we specified. At the end of the five seconds, it's going to perform the equilibration. It's going to create a unique scale factor for each individual, in individual sensing element within that sensor. In this case, there's nearly 2,000 elements. Yep. So they each get their own scale factor so they can normalize out and compensate for those variations due to manufacturing or due to the history of the use of the sensor. I say OK and we get a marked improvement in the uniformity uh, of the pressure display. Yeah. So that's a big improvement already, and that's only a single point. So, say we're not sure on our range. Could be 30 psi, it could be 40 psi. So we'll, ra we'll raise it up and we'll go up to, we'll say, 50 psi. Doesn't have to be exact. What's all that's important here is that, uh, that we know that each individual element, all 2,000 points, are experiencing the same pressure. That's the key to equilibration. Okay. We're not applying a load through a, through an Instrom machine or a dead weight applied to the sensor, uh, in which case we don't know specifically how much load is, is on each individual sensing element. Here, we do. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can see we're up, we're, we're up higher in the in the pressure range spectrum here. Yep. Uh, we're going to go back into the equilibration menu, and we'll radio button select uh, second equilibration point. It remembers the timing that we had set, which was five seconds, mm -hmm. and we'll start. Clock ticks down, and we'll have our second equilibration point. Now, 
depending on the version of software you have, you have your choice of doing a single point or a multi-point equilibration. Okay. Full eye scan software, you have the ability to do up to a 10-point multi-point equilibration. So for a very to cover a very wide range of pressures. Uh, our eye scan light enhanced software gives you three-point capability, and the eye scan light basic, you have a single point capability. So in that case, you've got to really know what your pressure range is right. uh, in order to make uh, the most effective use of that one equilibration point. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, now we're clear. So now, at least as we raise and lower the pressures, we can go up, up above 50. We still have a very uniform pressure group distribution across the entire sensor. We go up to 60, we're almost solid yellows here. Let's try going down below, somewhere in between where we started, between 30 and 50. Okay, now we have a very uniform distribution of turquoise in this case. Uh, so there, with just two equilibration points, we've got a, uh, we've got a, a much more uh, uniform performing sensor. Yes. So, now that we've got these equilibrations, uh, this equilibration performed, we want to save it. We don't have to, to redo this every single time. Right. Um, so regardless of what pressure we're set at here, we can go into the, uh, back into the tools menu. We can go right to a save equilibration, or we can go into the equilibration uh, menu and save from there. Okay. So I'm going to save the equilibration. Uh, for today's purposes, I'll just call it a demo equilibration and that is a, a dot equ extension for equilibrate all right so what i'm going to do now is i'll say i will capture this in the form of a snapshot and i will start another real-time window so that we can compare before and afters okay. right mm -hmm. so on the right we've got our after and on the left we've got real time You can see there, and uh, what I'll do is I we have the ability to go in and unequilibrate. So I'm going to go into the real time window and I'm going to unequilibrate that. So now we can see the, the marked difference between the before the unequilibrated data right. and the after. It's a clear difference.